Yeah, yeah. Welcome. Bye. It is Tuesday, which means it is don't say the car is topless. Don't say my car is topless. Say that it is designed. We're exposing one player, for better or worse, in this year's rookie class coming into your sacred dynasty leagues. And today, I want to talk about a running back coming out of RBU. You don't know what school I'm talking about. It's Georgia. Go dogs. Whoa, 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 whoa. Kenny McIntosh, the four-year player, 6'1", 210 pounds, has completely flown under the radar. Now, here's what I'll say. I was both disappointed and pleasantly surprised while watching the film on Kenny McIntosh and then diving into the numbers. That's what we're doing today. We're going to go through some film talk. We're going to dive into some numbers, and we're going to tell you how I feel about the player overall. Kenny McIntosh was Georgia's leading rusher in 2022, which again kind of went under the radar. Most people like know the names, but a lot of times Georgia has these these big name backs, these top prospects that go in the first or early second round, but that was kind of overshadowed by their defense, by Stenson Bennett, by, you know, some of the other players on the team, Brock Bowers and the other like well-known talent guys. And Kenny McIntosh wasn't a guy who was going for, you know, 1600 yards on the ground and 20 touchdowns and all that kind of stuff. So the disappointment came from just that, you know, he's not the level of prospect that Nick Chubb DeAndre Swift, Todd Gurley. I mean, prospect-wise, Sony Michelle came out as a first-round pick, obviously. But after you reset your realistic expectations, you come to realize that Kenny McIntosh is a good player. Now, me and Ray did a full two-round rookie mock draft yesterday, and at the 24th pick, the last the last pick of the two rounds, we were kind of going back and forth on whether or not we wanted to slot McIntosh in there. He went to the Giants in that mock draft, so the entire mock draft had landing spots attached to a real NFL mock draft. Landing in the Giants is going to be, you know, the no-fly zone for rookie running backs because Saquon's going to get a deal probably, and then you're stuck behind him for your rookie contract. Talent-wise, though, Kenny McIntosh, in my opinion, absolutely deserves to be in the first 24 picks of rookie draft. So there's good and there's bad with this profile. I'm not going to sit here and tell you he's the best runner in this class, not by any stretch of the imagination. He is a four-year guy, so he stayed at Georgia for all four years. He was obviously playing behind a lot of really, really good competition, as you always are when you're playing in the SEC. But that's also another good thing. When you play against the SEC, you have really good competition, which means you become a better player, right? You sharpen your sword as you're playing in a, in a conference like that. He's 6'1", 210 pounds. So I think you will get a lot of like, oh, Kenny McIntosh is the next James Cook. But Kenny McIntosh is a lot bigger than James Cook is. I also think he's a better runner than James Cook is. But they're both dynamite in the passing game. And I think I'd give the edge to Kenny McIntosh in that as well. Prior to the senior year, Kenny McIntosh did not have more than 80 touches in a season, okay? Similar to James Cook. That was one of the arguments I made against him last year. It was like he he didn't touch the ball, right? We're, we're extrapolating out these little games of like eight carries here and four receptions here to be a, a well-oiled NFL machine. That's typically not how it works. In Kenny McIntosh's 40 career games he's played at Georgia, he has reached 15 carries in a game one time. So... He kind of falls into that mold of like, if you're not an elite prospect Georgia running back, you're likely going to be in some sort of a committee. But he was the lead committee. He was a lead back in this committee, as you should be if you're a fucking senior. So McIntosh, when you watch him, sometimes he runs a little bit like upright. Sometimes he runs like, man, I wish I was running a route instead of running the fucking ball up the middle. But he has underrated lateral agility. He has this skill set where he's really good at like making himself skinny and getting himself in between the blockers despite being six foot one 210 pounds he he rarely makes like the big play but he makes enough like chunk plays right like he could turn two yards into 12 yards but he's not turning eight yards into 48 yards his elusive rating per pff ranked 42nd in the country that's per 170 qualified running backs his rate of 10 plus yard runs 15.9 percent so 15.9 percent of his carries went for 10 or more yards 48th in the country so you're talking about in the top third percentile of 170 running backs however however when you look at the percentage of his runs that went for 15 or more yards that dips down to 5.3 percent 118th in the NCAA so you're talking about like yes he can get that chunk yards of 12 yards but he has trouble exploding for more than that he has trouble hitting that high end speed and capitalizing on the 20 25 yard gains exemplified by those numbers the difference in those percentages 10.6 percent so you're talking about 15.9 percent of his runs went for 10 yards or more 5.3 percent of his runs went for 15 yards or more that's a 10.6 percent difference that number that difference is the 18th highest in the NCAA when you look at sports info solutions so we'd like to gather data from multiple analytical websites over here. His broken tackle plus missed tackles forced per attempt rate, 25.3% ranked 32nd. So the elusive rating, 42nd for PFF, 32nd for SIS. You're looking at a pretty good player, pretty good sample size of multiple sites seeing the same thing that each other saw, that he is a pretty elusive player. And the sexiest part of his profile is the passing down work. He is so good 
on third down. Curtis Patrick tweeted, since 2010, Power 5 NCAA running backs with 1,500 career rushing yards, 800 career receiving yards, and 26.0 career kick return averages. Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, Kenny McIntosh. I mean, I mean... I don't want to be the one to say it, but the top's fucking off right now. Now, I will I will throw a little rain onto this Kenny McIntosh parade. His price on Mojo right now is 464 So if you guys are new to Mojo, it's the stock market for athletes. It's an amazing app. It's fucking flawless. It's a beautiful thing. His price is 464 To give that relevance to other career players, it's kind of high for a running back, especially one that we don't know the draft capital of, the landing spot of, what he's going to do with the combine. So you have Rashad White at 499 Rashad Penny at 508, Elijah Mitchell at 517, all guys who are on trajectory to have way more career NFL stats or have already put up a lot of production. So I'm going to be honest, I think I would short Kenny McIntosh at 464 based on the mojo price. But I think a lot of the prices on there are inflated, so they're baiting me in to short it, and I think I'm going to do that. But I will not be shorting him in rookie draft because of numbers like this. And for those of y'all that follow the Senior Bowl, he did go down with the injury, but it ended up just being a cramp, so he's fine. In 2022, among all of this year's running back prospects, Kenny McIntosh ranked first in PFF receiving grade, first in yards per route run, fifth in share of receiving yards on the team. We could jump into we could jump into these numbers all day long. Yards per reception, 12.1 on a 0.8 average depth of target. Among 60 plus running backs with more than 25 targets, that number, yards per reception, 12.1, ranks behind only B. John Robinson. His yards per outrun number of 2.2, first among any running back in the country with 12 or more targets. Zero drops on the year. And they were using him all over the place. When you watch this guy's film, half the time he's in the slot, half the time he's out wide, half the time he's running wheel routes. 11.2% slot rate this year, 7.4% out wide. You take it back a year, 21.1% of his snaps came in the slot, 7.3% came out wide. So you're talking about almost nearly 30% of his snaps came in a receiving position. Like the receiving numbers are really fucking out here, man. He improved his reception totals, his yardage totals, and his yards per reception number, like the efficiency on these balls stayed up they did not dip a lot of the times you know I'll bring this up a lot like you see these running backs who get into their junior senior year right before they leave to go to the NFL draft and their reception numbers like their raw numbers go up from like 18 receptions to 34 and you're like oh this guy's a good pass catcher but you see those yards per reception and the efficiency numbers dip on those numbers because a lot of times the offense has just moved into the way that they're like oh this guy's our workhorse we're just going to throw him dump offs and let him do something with the ball in his hands Kenny McIntosh was able to increase his efficiency numbers year over year over year telling me that he is in fact a phenomenal receiving back he runs routes extremely smoothly he runs a diverse route tree like when you're watching him he's running slants from the outside breaking in he's running running wheel routes where he has to shake and bake a linebacker to get past him. He has really, really natural hands that Sensen Bennett often overthrew. So his numbers could have been even more inflated, but he's running everything. He's running all of the routes that you'd like to see, and he's ready to contribute on third downs immediately. And I'm looking at the pass blocking ability of this guy, and I saw a bunch of clips from the, uh, the senior bowl practices and stuff, and he looked great doing it. In film, what I saw was an extremely like willing blocker, an extremely uh, a pretty good blocker that was able to execute on most of the blocks, especially when a linebacker's coming full steam fucking ahead at you. He was able to pick up a lot of those. When I looked at the numbers per PFF, his ranking in terms of pass blocking grade was really low, but I'm, I don't know. This is one of those ones where I'm just going to trust my eyes on this. She picked up blocks and looked like he wasn't scared to do it. Looked like he was extremely willing to do it. 6'1", 210 pounds. Like this guy is going to be fine at the next level. So to wrap things up on Kenny McIntosh, um, I wouldn't be surprised if he creeps up draft capital wise higher than a lot of people expect. I wouldn't be shocked if he is the third, fourth, or fifth running back off the board. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a day two pick. I would be, I, I think I'd be surprised if he gets into the second round. But then again, I was surprised when James Cook got into the second round last year. I think he's probably a third round pick, which is good capital for a running back. Admittedly, admittedly, I do get some Kenny Gainwell vibes from Kenny McIntosh. Maybe it's just the Kenny. And what I mean by that is it, like Gainwell came out and he was universally loved for his talent in the passing game. And I think you'll you'll hear more and more about McIntosh rising up draft boards as draft Twitter really gets into this class. But what happened with Gainwell is like that love of him in the passing game started to overflow into his running game. And it was like an unchecked hype relative to what his rushing ability actually was. But I was also someone who comped Kenny Gainwell to J.D. McKissick, not while everybody else was comping him to the next Austin Eckler. So I came away from Kenny McIntosh's film thinking that he was a better pure runner than Kenny Gainwell is 
was. Uh, and it doesn't hurt that McIntosh has four inches and 10 pounds on Kenny Gainwell. So I can understand, like, I think the hype will be a little bit similar where it's like, okay, we love him so much in the passing game that we're going to start pretending that he's just as good on the ground as he is through the air, which is not the case, but I do think he's an extremely underrated runner. I think he's got enough explosion to pick up a lot of chunk yardage. I think his lateral agility is good. I think his elusiveness will go under the radar because it's not a flashy sense of elusiveness, but he's got the size. He's got the running ability, certainly got the pass catching ability. Uh, I'm excited to see where this kid lands. I hope it's not in New York in either of the New Yorks, behind Saquon, behind Brees Hall. I hope he goes to an open backfield where he can play a complimentary piece. Or, like, honestly, I'd almost see him as, like, a Samaje Pirine, who kind of goes under the radar for a long time, but when he gets his chance, he's really, really good. He's a good pass catcher. He can play a compliment to somebody and can get running work when needed. I think, I mean, I'd hope to see him get an opportunity with more workload than Samaje Pirine. He's obviously been buried on depth charts for quite a while, but I think that might be like a realistic way to look at a dude like Kenny McIntosh, but hopefully more of an upside. That That's like how you got to look at these rookies, man. You can't just comp them to their best case scenario. You have to have a range of outcomes for the way you think that they might end up. If Samaje Pirine is the baseline, then maybe you want to draft him a little bit higher than where you'd imagine his career arc would be. If you think Kenny McIntosh is more talented, which I kind of do, which I think he has more upside, I think he has, um, depending on draft capital and landing spot, he has the ability to be one of the top backs in this class. And it's not necessarily like an overly strong class running back wise outside of B. John Robinson. And then I think once you get to like the RB2, Jameer Gibbs, there's a lot of argument that could be made for anyone from like RB2 to seven. And I think Kenny McIntosh fits into that borderline top five role, depending on where he goes into the NFL draft. So that's it for Don't Say the Car's Top List. Say the Titties is out Tuesday. If you enjoyed, let me know what player you want to see next down in the comment section. Every Tuesday, we're going to be doing a deep dive on a single player. Today's was Kenny M. Next week's, I don't know. You let me know. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, obviously. We'll be covering everything NFL Draft, Dynasty, rookie-related over the next few months. If you enjoyed the video, hit the button that looks like this. Put the D in subscribe. I love y'all, and I'm out.